All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're gonna to be talking about whether you should buy a two-bay NAS or a four-bay NAS, totally depending on your use cases and what you're going to need in the future, especially. And this is also going to incorporate price because in some cases, buying a four-bay NAS can actually be cheaper than buying a two-bay NAS, even if you've got the exact same amount of storage, due to the fact that the four-bay NAS can use the storage more efficiently, assuming you're using a redundant RAID. And so in this video, I'm gonna be comparing two Synology models but in reality, this will work with every single NAS provider, Synology, QNAP, Azure Store, FreeNAS, all of them, due to the fact that the principles all hold true. All right, and so before we get started, there is a key assumption here to make all this math work out for these price specific stuff. The assumption here is that you're going to be using a redundant RAID. This means you'll be losing one hard drive to redundancy to make sure if one hard drive fails, you'll always have all of your data. And so that is one key assumption. And so on a two bay, it's going to be assumed you're going to use RAID 1 or whatever the equivalent is, SHR for Synology, mirrored VDEV and FreeNAS, yada, yada, yada. And then for the four bay, you're going to be in RAID 5 or SHR again in Synology, you get the picture. And so that constant single disk offset is the reason why the four bay for larger disk arrays can actually be a lot cheaper. And we'll go into that in a minute here. All right, and so now with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the most important things you need to kind of go ahead and consider when you're choosing between a two bay and a four bay NAS. All right, and so first off, by far, it's how much storage you need. If we're assuming that RAID 1, the maximum amount of storage you can get on a two bay NAS right now is 18 terabytes. This is because that's the largest single hard drive you can buy right now. In the future, this is gonna grow continuously, but right now it is 18 terabytes on the market. And so if you're gonna need more than 18 terabytes, it's really easy. You need a four bay NAS at least. So that's a really easy line to draw. If you're going to need more than 18 terabytes, you need a four bay NAS, or you're going to have to upgrade later on. And that brings us to our second most important thing, upgradability. If you're going to be needing more storage later on, a four bay NAS can be a great investment. Because every single NAS operating system, other than true NAS, which runs ZFS, and so it's a whole different beast, allows you to add disks later on to a RAID pool and expand that RAID pool out. So this means if you only need eight terabytes today, but in the future might need 20 terabytes, you can go ahead and buy a four bay NAS and throw two eight terabyte drives in there. Then when you need more storage, buy another eight terabyte drive, plug it in, expand it out, and now you're gonna have 16 terabytes. Then if you start needing storage again, buy another eight terabyte drive, stick it in there, expand it out again. Now you've got 24 terabytes of usable storage all with redundancy. And so that's why a four bay NAS can be so much better than a two bay NAS because you've got a really easy upgrade path and you can reduce your upfront costs. Now ZFS, which is the core of the true NAS boxes is different. ZFS does not allow you to add disks to a RAID Z pool. So you're not going to be able to expand that later on as easily. To increase your storage, you basically would have to add an entire another VDEV. I'm not gonna go into it super detail here, but essentially what that would mean is you would not get that same benefit of being able to keep everything in a RAID 5 array. Instead, you would have to have two mirrored pools, which means instead of having 24 terabytes, you'd have 16 terabytes if you wanted to keep it in house. Or what you could always do as well is basically back up your data, wipe the pool, rebuild it as RAID Z1, and then put the data on there, and then you'd be able to do the exact same thing. It's just not as in line as the super easy just throw a disk in there, throw a disk in there and expand outward as the other offerings have. And so this is a huge reason why four bay NASes can be so much better because they just offer so much more upgradability down the line. You can stick so much more data in them. And if that's going to be important to you, it's got a really nice clean cut upgrade path, which means the box you buy today won't be useless two years from now when you realize, oh crap, I need more storage. And so that's a huge thing to keep in consideration. Three is footprint and noise. And I'm gonna loop these together with power draw as well. So the four bay NAS is going to draw more power. It is going to be a little bit noisier and it is going to have a larger footprint normally. Now, obviously brand to brand, this is gonna be different, but in general with a four bay NAS, it's going to be bigger, probably about 50% larger of a footprint. So if you need it in a really small space with a really low power draw and you don't need that much storage, a two bay might be better for you. But a four bay is really not gonna be that much bigger. And especially when you're only talking four hard drives total, it's not gonna be that loud nor have that large of a power draw. 
though some hard drives can be very loud, I found. And so that is one thing to keep into consideration. It's not like it's going to be a server loud. It's just going to be noticeably audible if you listen for it in general. And so that is just one thing to keep in consideration because it might be a little bit more loud and take a little bit more power draw. So if you really need a small footprint in that, the two bay probably wins there, but not by much. And so now we're going to go into price. And this is where it's really interesting because price really depends on exactly what you're going to need in terms of the amount of terabytes of storage. And so if you remember back at the beginning of this video, I talked about how the assumption here is if you're getting a two bay is going to be a RAID one or the equivalent. And if you're in a four bay, you're going to be running RAID five or the equivalent. What this means is both of these, you're going to lose one disc of storage space. And so that means you're losing half your storage space on your two bay. Then you're losing one fourth of your storage space on the four bay, assuming it's full. And so that's the big reason why a four bay can be cheaper because if you need a lot of storage, especially, you can do it with less wasted hard drive space due to the fact that you're losing one fourth of your data versus one half of your data to redundancy. And so if you look right here, what I've done is I've pretty much gone on Amazon and I've priced out a few different hard drives and pretty much just averaged them out for what about you're going to pay for them. This is a subject to change depending on shortages, everything like that, but this is pretty much what you're going to pay roughly. And so I've chosen the DS220 plus and the DS420 plus from Synology because they are a two bay and a four bay NAS that have essentially identical internal components. And so really the only difference between these two units is how many hard drive bays you have. And so that's what we're really focusing on. And so the DS220 plus is $300 and the DS420 plus is $500. And so then I've gone through and priced out four different hard drive options in terms of different sizes. You can get different ones, but these are the ones I chose and they're rough price points to Iron Wolf's. And so as you can see right here, the price per terabyte for these three are all identical. But once you go into the 16 terabyte version, that is a lot more difficult to manufacture apparently. And so your price per terabyte goes up. So it's actually more expensive per amount of data. So you can get two eight terabyte drives for 400 bucks, which gives you 16 terabytes or a 16 terabyte drive for 500 bucks. That's because of manufacturing difficulties, obviously, with getting that much data in a single hard drive. Then right here, I've gone through and done the math to get four terabytes usable, 12 terabytes usable, and 16 terabytes usable for the two different options. And the ones that are highlighted in blue means that I've only used three out of the four bays for the DS420 Plus. And so to get eight terabytes, what I did was for the two bay, I got two eight terabyte drives, lose one for redundancy, boom, I'm left for eight terabytes. And then for the four bay, what I did is I got three four terabyte drives, lose one to redundancy, and I have eight terabytes usable. Then since I only use three out of the four bays, it is really easy to upgrade this later on and could easily go to 12 terabytes for just an extra $100 without having to upgrade any of the other hard drives. And so that's what we've gone through and done here. And so this is all pretty much set up, assuming you have an exact storage need that you know, and you say, okay, I know at the end of this life, this is how much they're going to cost, and I'm going to need exactly this much storage, which most people probably don't know. And so as you can see here, with the $200 price difference between the two and the four bay units, 12 terabytes is the break even point where if you're only looking for cost for per terabyte usable, it is actually going to be cheaper from here on out to use the four bay rather than the two bay due to that extra price cost of the hard drives. But in reality, this is only half the picture because I assume most people don't know their exact storage needs five years out from now. And so one of the huge flexibilities of a four bay unit is the ability to go, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I just need eight terabytes right now. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy two eight terabyte drives and only populate two of the bays. Okay, I did pay $200 more than I would have if I got the two bay option. So that is a sunken cost. But that $200 gives you the ability to down the line, upgrade this thing to three times the storage space because you're going to lose one disc. So the first time you only have one usable disc if you've got two bays. Then if you've got four bays, you're going to have one disc lost to redundancy and then three discs of usable storage. And so because of that, you can triple your storage space from a two bay to a four bay option just because of that one disc loss for redundancy. 
So if you think your storage needs could increase in the future, it's not a bad idea to spend the extra 200 bucks up front to get you that much more resiliency. It's definitely not cheap, but it is going to be a lot cheaper than having to throw this NAS away and get a new one after only two years because you're like, well, it just can't upgrade to enough storage that I need. Having that built-in upgrade path, especially for people who th storage needs might grow is a really nice thing to have because you don't end up having things just be useless e-waste. Now in the next five years, if you know you're not gonna be using that much storage, I know a lot of people who have four terabytes is way more storage than they could ever possibly fill because they just like to take photos and they want their computers backed up. That's honestly not that much storage. And so having a two bay NAS is perfect for that. But for people who really might need a lot of storage down the line, having the four bay and the ability to upgrade that is so nice because it just means you have less e-waste and you get more utilization out of your initial investment. All right, and the final reason is also the hardest to quantify because it totally depends on the exact two NASs you're comparing between, and that is possible hardware upgrades from going from a two bay to a four bay. In the example I used, I made sure to pick two Synologies that had identical internal specs, so that way there was only the disk difference. But in reality, going from a two bay to a four bay, you're probably gonna have additional features in there. You might have a more powerful CPU. There's a ton of different stuff in there that you do need to look out for. I'm not really gonna go over it because you just need to look into it. And that's another thing to think about. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. I hope this helped shore up the differences and why there's, in some reasons, really good reason to buy a four bay, even if you don't right now need it, versus a two bay NAS. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna start sponsoring the channel and get early access to all my videos, there's a link in the description for that. All right, have a good one. Bye.